Okay, so welcome to this video. In it, I'm going to talk about how the human voice works, review the basic parts, and then I'm going to give you a demonstration where we see it kind of in action. And so what we talked about in previous videos is that you can basically divide the sound production mechanism in singing in the human voice into two parts. The first part would be the vocal folds, and these are in your trachea in the top part called the larynx or voice box. And you can kind of think of it almost like a pair of lips inside your throat. And so these can open when you're breathing, or they can come together when you're talking or singing. And when you sing, what happens is that you bring the vocal folds together so they're closed, but then you increase the pressure inside your lungs, inside your trachea. And so that leads to eventually a burst of air going through the vocal folds. And then you see that after a little while they close back up and that's because you're using muscles in your throat to put the vocal folds under some tension. So they're springy and they will spring back together. There's another effect that I mentioned last time, which is that once the air starts flowing through there then the pressure in between the vocal folds drops through this Bernoulli effect. And that also contributes to the vocal folds coming back together. And then once they're back together, the cycle repeats. And so we have this oscillation of the vocal folds whose frequency is controlled by how much tension you've put on the folds. And remember, we're doing that either by the vocalis muscles, which are inside the vocal folds themselves, making those stiffer or looser, and the cricothyroid muscles, which kind of stretch the vocal folds. So if you relax the uh, vocalis muscles, then you can still stretch or, or shrink the vocal folds from the outside by these other muscles. Okay, and so some combination of the action of these muscles results in either a higher frequency being produced or a lower frequency being produced. So it's a basically a simple method mechanism. It's pretty much the same as if I buzz my lips or So I can control the pitch of that by just how much tension there is and how much, how springy I make my lips. Okay, so obviously that doesn't sound very much like singing, uh, but that might be something similar to what the vocal folds would sound like on their own if they were right at the opening of your mouth, but they're not. So what happens is that the sound produced by the vocal folds then goes into what's called your vocal tract. So that includes the nasal cavity, the oral cavity, and the pharynx. And that is like the cavity of a musical instrument. So that's kind of like the body of a violin or a guitar. It's taking in the sound, which uh, in those cases would be caused by vibrations of the strings. And what it's doing is kind of filtering that sound, enhancing certain frequencies, maybe suppressing other frequencies. And so it just acts like a, kind of a resonator for the, the sound that is coming from your vocal folds. And so what we can do is think about the spectrum of the sound coming from the vocal folds and how that gets processed by the vocal tract. Okay, so the first picture on the left here is the spectrum of sound from the vocal folds. It might look something like this. There'd be a fundamental frequency and then all of the harmonic frequencies above that, multiples of that fundamental frequency. Okay, so this is falling off slowly. If you're singing in falsetto, remember that's where the vocal folds are relaxed, but they're just being stretched from the outside. That tends to produce a set of harmonics that fall off more quickly. So your vocal folds are controlling the basic pitch, the fundamental frequency, and then some aspects of the harmonics, kind of how quickly they're falling off. Now, the vocal tract, it will have certain frequencies of sound that 
vibrate more readily there. So if you have a standing wave of sound inside your vocal tract, then at certain frequencies uh, that will die off quickly and at other frequencies that will that will resonate more that will last longer and so those natural vibration frequencies of your vocal tract are what's shown in the second picture here and you see there's various peaks and those are what are known as the vocal tract formants okay so depending on the configuration of your mouth and your tongue and so exactly the shape of your vocal tract those can be at different locations that's one of the really interesting things about the voice you can actually change the location of these so that would be different from say the body of a guitar that would have a fixed set of, or a fixed uh, set of frequencies that it likes to vibrate at okay so what happens is that the sound from your vocal folds goes up into the vocal tract and you go from this picture to a picture like this and you see that the specific the regions of frequency that vibrate readily inside the vocal tract those are going to be enhanced relative to the other frequencies and so this original sound from your vocal folds is processed into a different sound uh, which is it's going to be the same pitch but a different timbre so a different kind of sound and that sound is further going to depend on exactly what you're doing with your mouth and your, your tongue and everything. So one thing that we talked about last time is that specific vowel sounds, you know, if you say ah versus ooh versus e, so that's clearly changing your mouth shape a lot. And those specific vowel sounds are associated with particular shapes for these vocal tract formants. And so there's like a characteristic look for the spectrum when it's an E or an A ah or an U. And so I was kind of interested to see whether we could kind of do this in practice, whether we could take a sound whose spectrum is like this, like a just a buzzing sound. I actually decided to start with this sound. So taking my upper lip, putting it over my lower lip and just uh, just kind of that gentle buzzing sound, I thought maybe that might be what the vocal folds on their own might sound like. And so what I decided to do in this experiment or demo that I'm going to show you is just take that sound and then artificially process it using audacity to emphasize certain frequencies and to suppress other frequencies. So let's have a look at what this looks like. And so what you see here is just a recording that I made of that sound and I, I copied it four times. So let's have, have a listen. Turn it down a little. Okay, so what we can do in Audacity is actually to go in and we apply an effect called filter curve. And so this is basically just like the, it's kind of like the equalizer that you see on some audio equipment where you can emphasize the bass or the treble or the mid range. But here we could really do whatever we want. So it's a filter curve. And so for example, I could take this and maybe I just want to, maybe I just want to focus on the very high frequencies so I could suppress everything else and keep those high frequencies and then we can hear what it sounds like. Okay, so it's that same sound but you're just hearing the high frequencies if I bring in a few of those lower ones. Okay, so it's, it sounds, sounds different. Now, with the different vowel sounds, there's particular shapes that are supposed to be emphasized and suppressed. And so I just looked at some pictures of what the formats for the a, a or e or u sound like and i just kind of manipulated the curve in order to reproduce what the format for an a a sound is supposed to look like and that was like this and so what i can do so basically you can do this yourself just move move the curve up and down 
at various points. And now if you want to, um, and then just click OK, and that will apply it to the original sound. Okay, so that basically now artificially is playing the role of the vocal tract. That's supposed to be what the vocal tract is doing to the sound from your vocal folds when you're pronouncing an ah sound. Let me just increase the volume on that one a little bit. Okay. And so that was that was supposed to be the shape of the formats for the ah sound. And now I'll do a similar thing, but with a different shape of, of the formant curve. So filter curve, and then, so I did this kind of in advance. So this is supposed to be, uh, a, well, a little bit simplified version of the E sound, which emphasizes these frequencies a little above 300 hertz and also emphasizes some, some very high frequencies around 3000 hertz. So I'll play that one. And the final one, I, I saw what the curve was supposed to look like for the ooh sound. And so that one emphasizes some low, lower and some middle frequencies. So let's have a look at the curve for the ooh sound. Okay, so that, that's what, what it looks like. Um, and again, I, I wasn't too careful, just more or less tried to emphasize the frequencies that I, that I saw in the pictures for the ooh four months. All right, so now we're ready. So I've taken this original buzzing sound and we're gonna hear that again at the start. And then I've processed it in three different ways just by emphasizing certain frequencies and suppressing others and we're gonna hear what it sounds like. Okay, so you can really hear the, you can really hear the different vowel sounds coming out. Just to emphasize that even more, the similarity with actual voice and actual vowel sounds. What I also did was just to make a track of myself singing roughly at that frequency, the ah, the e, and the oo sound. So we'll hear the buzzing, then we'll hear me sing an ah, then we'll hear the artificial ah, and then the same for the e and for the oo. So I was really blown away when I did that the first time. It really works. So the, so this is the, the theory behind how our voice works. You really just start with something that isn't very pleasant necessarily, this, this kind of buzzy sound. And uh, that was just my guess for what the vocal folds might sound like. And then I applied the filtering as the vocal tract is supposed to do. And we really ended up with sounds that were a lot like a human voice singing ah, e, and ooh.